already, I want to tell you something. The fact that you're here, that means that you can win at whatever you do, right? And that's a good thing to be here. Now, I'm going to talk about creating startups for Africa. And um, when the people were talking about the funding thing, you know, you hear a lot of um, questions where, where do I go for this? Where do I go for that? And I'm very, very controversial person, but I'm trying to tone it down today. So, and the reason why I'm saying that is I feel sorry for startups that you have to ask for these kind of questions. Where do you have to go to? And believe you or not, most of the guys that you find that are successful is because they know somebody, they know somebody, they got them there, right? And it shouldn't be like that, ever. It should be like that. There should be a system where you know, if I want to start a business, I go here, I know a bank that does this for startups, I can get funding, I can get training. It shouldn't be because your uncle works in the ministry. It shouldn't be like that. So as Africans, we need to work towards changing that. But that's just me being controversial. So, um, you can see it. Um, the question was asked, what is a startup? And again, nobody really knows. Because these are people make it up as they go along, right? So somebody's saying a startup is a young company that is just what, building to develop, right? Or beginning to develop. And another person says startup is what a company working to solve a problem. And another person says a startup is a human institution. So there's different definitions, but there are connections here. Company, and then you got a young person, and an institution. So you need basically co-founders. You're a human. You need to form a company, and you need an institution. So the structure to whatever it is that you do. Now, these are the ecosystems that I feel you need as a startup to survive, right? So an, um, an ecosystem is basically formed by people and organizations interacting as one. And I'm not talking about the situation where you find that, OK, um, organizations like Bruni, where we are, because I work for um, a company, I help startups start up their business and whatnot, right? So a co-working space, exactly like Bruni. Now, we cannot do it by ourselves. So we need an ecosystem around us for that to happen. So you need things like universities. But these universities that you go to, you know, you're giving a students that you're not training them very well because you educate them in a way that they seem to think because they've got a degree, they're supposed to get a job. Now, you enter the job market. If you were here yesterday, you'd have seen one of the slides with, what, 70,000 students going for a job that is open for just 70 people. So basically, what you're doing as a university is you're training students to work. You're not training them to work, create jobs. So you just go to school, you got your degree, great you're supposed to get a job. But in reality, it doesn't work like that. So then you isolate yourself from the ecosystem. Then we've got big companies. So you're thinking big companies like who? Now, from West Africa, I would say Samsung, because they're here. They are companies that can work as part of this tech ecosystem together with um, supporting ecosystem um, providers like Bunny and all of those other people. Now, you've got companies, research companies, the World Bank. Why are you, as a World Bank, trying to open innovation hubs? Doesn't make sense. Your job is not to do that. Your job is to research why, when, what entrepreneurs need, and then support organizations like Bunny to provide those services for the startups. But then when you, as World Bank, decide to then open your own innovation hub, you're competing with um, Bunny. And that is not your strong point. Your strong point is what? Researching and providing money for things like that to be done. Then we've got service providers. I don't know how they function in your country, but in West Africa, you've got the MTNs, we've got Tigos, we've got Airtels. They're all also doing what? Opening their own innovation hubs. It doesn't work. I'm sure some of you have entered competitions where you've given your apps and put it on the app stores, and then what happens? Nothing. Because all of these guys are working different silos, and we need all of these people to work together in order for us to have an ecosystem. Right now, we don't have the ecosystem because everybody's just doing their own thing. So in a way, for this to happen, we need all the companies, all the six companies, um, to get together so that we will know, as a startup, if I know 
that I go to Bunny to stay there for the next year building my ideas. If I need money, I go here. We get internet support from the telcos. That's what they're supposed to do because internet is expensive. So they're supposed to support us or the tech startups with just internet, nothing else. We don't need you in our business talking about, oh, exclusivity. I wanted apps to be, gone on my, um, to be put on my app store. No. Your job is to provide internet support for the ecosystem. That's it. Nothing else. Then we've got the funding organizations, those that give grants. And again, the grant organizations always talk about, oh, um, we want social good. No. We need money to build businesses. Human beings, by nature, we know what to do when we have money to help each other, right? So do not engage startups from day one and tell them, oh, your business has to solve a problem. Not every single business has to solve a problem. Because if that's the case, tell me what Instagram is solving. What dark faces, what people pulling dark faces and going, it's not solving a problem, but it's still a business. They making money. Simple as. We need funding. If, um, I can tell you, uh, people that give money for social impact, if I'm a startup and you give me money and I'm able to employ somebody, that's a social impact. I've solved your problem. <laughs> the challenges that we face and everybody faces is funding, well, from my perspective, a mentorship and policies. But I know they touched on funding, so I'll move away from that. But mentorship, we all know the people tend to do what? Obey and respect people that kind of look like them, right? So if my friend is successful and is mentoring me, it's an easier process. But over time, we seem to have this inferiority um, complex. When we see Europeans, whatever they tell us is true, right? And I'm fortunate, I'm fortunate enough to have grown up in the UK, so I can tell you most of them is BS. Because some of them just come out of school, They've never started business before, right? They've got the MBAs, and then they come into Africa, the beast Africa, to tell you about business. I used to work in Nigeria. You, you know, you send a proposal, and guess what? The person will tell you, oh, hey, a meeting is at 9 o'clock. You get there, and it's not even in the office. So you sit there for two hours. They get there, and they tell you, oh, Oh, just send me the proposal. Then you think, but I just sent you the proposal. They don't even check the email, right? And all of those other stuff. Then you go back to your hub, and that kid that was sent from the UK will tell you, oh, but send them the email. They will reply to it. No, they didn't. But because you're thinking they know what they're talking about, you don't challenge that. But maybe if you had African mentors that have been through the system, will actually tell you that maybe if you need to meet this investor, go and meet them at the church. Because that's where they're going to be. Right? Don't go to the office at 9 o'clock because it's not going to be there. Because we know the system. So we need mentors that actually know the environment. Right? We don't need mentors that come from outside to tell us what to do. That's just me being controversial. But again, short on time, I personally feel like this whole ecosystem, we need to manage it like a business, right? So you as a startup need to know that when you walk into Bunny and iSpace and all of these other spaces, we are about serious business. So what I need from you is your passion. Because there are going to be times where you want to commit suicide. It's not a joke. Being an entrepreneur is not a joke. I'm telling you. Forget, you know, you people win stories because you might see the Bill Gates and, you know, they label people Bill Gates of Africa. Trust me, before that, there were suicidal thoughts. But nobody tells you that because when you go on Facebook, nobody tells you what the real life is. But we need to manage this. We need to set goals and say all startups coming from Africa has to be like this. You know, in a systematic way, you know how to pitch. You've got your MVPs, you've got everything in order. And we need to be management about it. We should not be scattered brains about it so that when you go to Europe to go and compete over there, the moment you step on stage, you're not in awe of people because you know your business. You're not there, so when they ask you questions, oh, what do you do in Africa? You'd be like, eh, but eh, eh, but eh, no. <laughs> right? 
right? Because the same brain you have is the same brain they do. So we need to manage this whole ecosystem as a business and get all our structures in place before we put you to pitch in front of people abroad, right? So me personally, I'll run through real quick. We need a single digital market where a Tanzanian startup does not have to pay taxes in Ghana. You can literally launch a business um, in Ghana or in Nigeria across the board. Let's treat Africa like the way the US is, without borders. If I can get a passport without needing visa to come to this country, then startups should do the same. So I think we need to start lobbying policies so that we can just trade as a single market, so that we can just launch businesses and startups across the board. I can hire people from here to work for me without me having to be a citizen of this country. So all I'll end with real quick is a, a pessimist, I think William Churchill said this, right? Oh, sorry, Winston Churchill. Um, a pessimist, you always see difficulties. Everybody will tell you that things are no, never going to work. But please, let's be optimistic about what it is that we do. As Africans, startups is not easy, but please do it, and we can create jobs for ourselves. Let's work with the ecosystem that we have. And any time and anytime you want to be in, in West Africa, give me a call, give me a shout, and I will introduce you to great people that will help you build your businesses. Okay? So thank you. And questions from the audience? Don't be scared, I don't buy it. <laughs> what I want you actually to, to, to help me is what makes us Africans not trust each other and actually trust uh, basically uh, our, our friends Europeans. Actually, they are doing great support for us, but um, I'm asking about what, what is the problem of our mindset. Like we can't trust each other on, on what we do and, and we get to the point of trusting uh, uh, our fellow Europeans so much? Um, that's a great question. I think um, it just, it's data, right? Europeans are very good at letting you read about themselves. So the more I know about you, I trust you. But then with Africans, we don't do that, right? We let other people tell our own stories. So again, if you look at a lion, a lion is just a bigger version of a pussycat. But whatever you've been told, is it will rip you apart and everything. So the moment you see it, you fear. So with as Africans, we need to tell great stories about ourselves, put data out there. So if you're one of the persons, like even the guy's Studio 19 with the video, do videos, great videos about Tanzania so that Ghanaians can watch it and thinking, yeah, why go to Dubai? I can just fly over and come to um, Tanzania and enjoy myself, right? That's what we need to do. So tell our stories. All you guys, with, if you're a comic and you do comics and everything else, just put it on Facebook. Do something great about your um, environment. Tell the story why we need to be here. Sell your country because nobody can sell your nation better than you. You don't need, you know, anybody. Because trust me, I can, I, I'm from London, and London is not a nice place to be, right? It's not. But you wouldn't think that. You think London is paved with gold until you get there. Then you realize that, oh, okay, I want to come back home. So Africans, let's talk to each other and help each other tell our own stories. Mr. Josiah, uh, that was a very interesting presentation, really. And uh, if you look at it from the previous uh, guy that asked the question, he mentioned uh, about the support that we get from the West. But I would ask you, from your experience, uh, this is the other West, West Africa, not, <laughs> not the other West. OK, uh, so from your experience in West Africa, you, you do understand that in Africa we have problems like corruption, uh, bad policies. So uh, being in iSpace, how do you ensure that, or how, what do you guys do to push the government maybe to put policies that are, support, that are supportive for the startups? What do you guys do? Like if you want to say, okay, we need like a, redu a reduction in the percentage size of tax that we need to pay as startups, what do you guys do? Um, we, we're very good at lobbying government. Um, so we have meetings with the government pretty much on a daily basis because we got people to do that for us. And um, so we're moving into those e-government and just kind of helping them understand what startups are so to begin with. Um, because over there, they say they can't tell the difference between a startup and SME or even what youth is supposed to be. Because in West Africa, especially Ghana, a youth goes all the way up to 55 so I'm safe but <laughs> so 55. in that sense when the, and then when you define business or an SME 
um, a multinational that is making, let's say, five to ten million dollars, but then because they've got, let's say, ten people, automatically will be taxed the same way you and I will be taxed, right? It doesn't make sense. See, so it's all about um, engagement and educating them on what it is that startups actually do, because startups, we don't know really how to make money. That's the truth, right? We don't. We just start off a business and hopefully one day we make money. But along the way, people then obviously mentor you and then you put your business in structure. So again, maybe in the first three years, when we talk to them, we tell them maybe in the first three years, do not um, you know, impose taxes on us. And that is no way me telling you, don't pay taxes. Because you need to. If you want your government to be free of Western um, involvement, let's all pay taxes. Because that's through loans is the reason why the West can do what they do. But that's me just being controversial. Thank you so much. Uh, before I let you go, can we take a selfie? Oh, cool. Yeah, please. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Cool. And thank you very much. And you, know, you guys need to support this project, right? You really need to do because next year, I want all the West Africans to fly down here for this project. <laughs>